ओके या सो हे गाइस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग दिस वर्कशॉप दिस इज द फर्स्ट आईपीएफ वर्कशॉप व्हिच इज केटर्ड टुवर्ड्स प्रेग्नेंट पेरेंट्स राइट एंड आई एम सो ग्लैड दैट इट इज बीइंग होस्टेड बाय लेखा अह या आई एम सो ग्लैड दैट इट इज बीइंग होस्टेड बाय मेका सो मेका इज द फाउंडर ऑफ इनिजियो बर्थ राइट she is a lamas childbirth educator and a certified infant ma- massage trainer uh, she has been part of ipf since since the last few months and has been actively helping the pregnant parents you know like a lot of parents have just vouched for services you know in the group itself and it's all organic so i'm so happy that she's taking out time you know to help us with with this workshop so over to you mekha yeah Thank you so much for the sweet introduction, Priya. So what I'll do is I'll quickly share my screen, and from there I'll just begin with my intro and all of that, so that Work. we respect everyone's time here. Work. So uh, I'll just quickly share. So meanwhile, uh, Meka is just sharing her screen. Let me just uh, set the tone of this workshop. So the first thirty minutes, you know, will be uh, Meka just you know going through her presentation. So uh, so how we'll go about this is we just you know understand. Uh, her learning her expertise and everything via the presentation and in case you have any doubts any questions please use the chat box right just just add all your questions over there and once the presentation is done we'll go through all your questions theek okay? hai so we do not entertain any audio questions coming via audio we we basically go through questions from the chat box only right so please make sure you are like uh, mentioning it over there uh yeah so what do you make up yeah so i hope the screen is visible to you guys yeah, it is All right, fine. So first of all, welcome to all the mommies who have joined in, or uh, you know, today morning with us. So uh, first thing I would like to say is that thank you for taking out this time to you know getting educated and making yourself uh, get a little more prepared in knowing about your pregnancy and about your labor because this is the very first step, the foundations that you can actually take in having. a uh, better birthing experience so uh, you know priya already gave me an introduction but my name is mekha i am a certified childbirth educator under the lamas philosophy i am a certified infant massage trainer other than this i am also a registered nurse and also a you know hospital administrator i was working with hospitals like hinduja and fortis and uh, being both uh, at the both ends i've got a clear and fair idea about what exactly does the patient need and moreover when we actually talk about birth and pregnancy such a biological process has been nowadays kind of traumatized and there's so much of fear as that is associated with the subject so that's where you know i have started this uh, taking this a uh, small initiative or small baby uh, steps towards uh, empowering women and educating them more about the pregnancy because this is a period that you need to be enjoying rather than kind of you know just worrying and stressing about what exactly is happening with my body and how do i actually face labor you can actually do it you are healthy that's why you're pregnant and you can absolutely absolutely labor your baby uh, the way that you want in full control okay so first of all congratulations that you're pregnant but now what like that's the first question that you know that keeps popping into everyone's mind because pregnancy is the time that you you know kind of surrender everything and then you just want to listen to everything that people are saying around you but somewhere you just lose your own voice okay so somewhere i say that first thing knowledge is power educating yourself about what's exactly happening in your body and why things are happening is going to actually help you in navigating this journey better so because we see that 80% of the women like this is worldwide statistics i'm saying are really fearful about labor and birth and they have so much of anxiety just thinking about the day that they you know the whole birthday the the day that they are actually going to labor and why this has started happening is because uh, you know uh, birth have started moving into hospitals since a few decades and birth is no more like a community centric event anymore like initially you know i am sure you must have heard stories from your grandmothers or your mother that you know uh, no one really kind of actually helped us you know there were not uh, these kind of procedures and things and you know we never ran to the doctors births used to be taking place at home 
and you know there used to be some uh, someone who would be coming to help and there were so many hands coming in to help you to actually labor your baby even at home and births were like a more community centric event because there were so many hands to help but now we know that you know there's a whole shift we are into nuclear families we are into uh, smaller family settings and uh, there is so much of advancement in terms of medical facilities that is available to us so even such a biological process has been moved into hospital yes definitely you require some kind of medical aid and help it's not that you can free birth your babies but you really need to know what is exactly right and wrong because what majorly happens is you end up and you end up just taking a lot of decisions for yourself but just soon after birth women are really not happy about the way it has happened or uh, they end up feeling traumatized and then they keep questioning to themselves have i even have i just failed myself or really i don't know Oh, why did this happen? I did not even understand. That was just like you know a dream. I was not a, a, not even control of my own body and what exactly was happening. So I always say that the more you know, is the lesser you are going to fear. So I uh, say that you know these four areas are your core uh, cornerstones of your pregnancy. Like if I had to tell you that you have to go and run a marathon tomorrow and uh, I'll just send you on the tracks, will you be able to do that? No, uh, If I, but if I tell you like, you know, I'm telling you a uh, one month before that, you know, you have to run this marathon and you start preparing yourself, you start preparing your body. It's just like that. You have to prepare your body for the big event, which is coming. It's not just that you're happy. Oh yes, I'm pregnant. I'm going to listen to everything that, uh, you know, every saying uh, what my doctor is saying what uh, my family members are saying and yes i'll be able to labor the way that i want to know it sometimes you will be so disappointed that how your body is going to really fail you because it really never got the preparation that it had to get all throughout the pregnancy so these are the four core uh, core areas that we are going to talk with and a lot about your labor and you know some tricks and tips that i can help you with to face uh, labor okay so uh, first going ahead maintaining your nutrition now when i talk about nutrition everyone's eating healthy everyone's uh, having like you know the right amount of food but are you having a balanced diet a balanced diet is what we are actually aiming and focusing on because you know that as it is during pregnancy your immunity is on the lower side so uh, your immunity, uh, there's a whole kind of, you know, uh, hormonal play which is happening in your body. You will be actually realizing that your strength has kind of decreased because your it, it's kind of nourishing uh, another human being inside you. So definitely, uh, you know, you need to eat really a balanced diet so that you are able to supplement not just to your body needs, but to the baby's needs as well. Now, when we talk about a balanced diet, what exactly is a balanced diet? Okay. So you need to make sure that you're having enough amount of carbs, protein, fats and calcium, which we actually really forget in our diet. OK, now when we talk about veggies, everyone like I'm just having the right amount of veggies. In fact, I've turned into a vegetarian post since the time I've actually you know known that I'm pregnant. But uh, how much vegetables are you having? So it's a right uh, time to start eating all the seasonal fruits and vegetables. Uh, according to WHO, a pregnant woman needs to have about 500 grams of vegetables in 24 hours. Okay, I'm not saying just have like one particular amount. Uh, uh, type of vegetable just uh, you know you can have a mixed bhaji you could have it in form of salads all throughout the day you have 24 hours to consume that so make sure that you are having enough vegetable servings in a day now when we talk about fats you need to have the right amount of fats all throughout the pregnancy you know you might have heard just mix like ghee and have now what is the right amount of ghee that you can have yes ghee is a very excellent fat that you can have but it's not that you just need to have you know spoonfuls of ghee all throughout your pregnancy you're just going to end up with a lot of weight gain and towards the end of uh, labor people who tell you to have a lot of ghee you are going to end up with a lot of diarrhea rather than nothing else okay so ghee uh, having it like two to three tea, uh, spo uh, you know teaspoons in your diet or cooking your food in ghee is a good idea but having like just uh, plain spoons of ghee throughout pregnancy is something that we really do not recommend again protein either you are 
vegetarian or non vegetarian we say that because protein are the building blocks of your body uh, or your cells okay you require good amount of protein now you can get this protein if you are a non vegetarian from your eggs your poultry if you are a vegetarian you can have again soya bean paneer tofu or uh, you know you could uh, even have mushrooms mushrooms also has good amount of protein and yes you can safely consume them in pregnancy there's nothing really bad about having mushrooms in pregnancy okay so again uh, and calcium which we again forget now most women actually get averted to the smell and taste of milk uh, in pregnancy now if you do not really like having milk which is again a good source of calcium you can have one uh, spoon of sesame seeds again something which is going to help you with your morning sickness as well and again gives you like really good source of calcium in your body so eating a balanced diet is really really important and making sure that you are having small frequent meals like having or snacking every 2 to 3 hours because this is going to replenish uh, replenish your body with the right amount of nutrients that you ac actually require so i am sure you might be having three times a day which which comes no doubt but you know adding that little two extra servings one is your mid morning snack it could be just having a juice or having a salad or one fruit any seasonal fruit that you would have and then you know uh, shifting it again towards 4:00 uh, o'clock 5:00 o'clock where you have your cup of tea make sure that you're having something again nutrition around a uh, nutritious around that time so make sure that you are having at least uh, you know uh, four to five times a day that's the right amount of uh, it's snacking intervals that you need to take uh, uh, during when you're pregnant uh trying to drink a lot of water now what is the right amount of water i always say that you should have 10 to 12 glasses of water now again in this 10 to uh, 12 glasses uh if you can drink it from the glass well and good or else i actually say to you know invest in a good sipper bottle all throughout your pregnancy and have from that sipper bottle there are two reasons first thing when you actually uh, sip it's not going to gag you much and again the whole thing of morning sickness which comes uh, we actually say that have a water from a sipper bottle because when you keep sipping on water you do not really feel like you do not feel a lot nauseous around that time it helps uh, in calming down your morning sickness and second when you're actually sipping from a bottle you tend to drink a lot of uh, more water as compared to you know gulping it down or just directly taking it from a bottle and uh, prenatal supplements it's very very important i have heard a lot of myths around these as well like recently one of the mo uh, mothers had messaged me telling i really do not know if i need to take my iron and folic acid supplements because someone told me that that can actually make the baby's complexion darker no please do not fall into these myths you really need these macronutrients because as much as you're going to uh, take food and the you know nutrition that's going to be absorbed by them you really do not know how much will be absorbed but these prenatal supplements have a macro nutri uh, nutrients which will be readily absorbed in your body and you require them for the growth and development of your uh, body so maintaining nutrition and in eating a healthy balanced diet is of utmost importance during pregnancy moving ahead to regular exercise now i cannot emphasize enough on the importance of having uh, of exercising during pregnancy because just like how we spoke you have to run a marathon you really can't expect that you will just go and run it on the day of the event it really doesn't happen like that your body will kind of fail you you because your body was not prepared for that kind of exertion or your body uh, your muscles were in strength in that that uh, you know at, for uh, for the big event which is going to happen so exercise uh, basically kind of prepares your body it reduces all the discomforts that you are actually experiencing right now and also women who ex uh, exercise also are able to relax down better and in turn because we are exercising you are increasing the blood supply in your body the more the oxygen supply to the baby it's actually helping your baby to have a proper growth and development now uh, how much should i exercise that's a frequent question which is asked so again what i say is who recommends that 150 minutes of exercise is something that every pregnant woman should have in a week 
Now, how will you actually kind of time this 150 minutes? As simple as doing 30 minutes of exercise in a day. It could be now, uh, you know, if you are someone who had been exercising before your pregnancy, continue to do your exercises what you were doing because your body is already trained with that kind of exertion but if you are actually someone who's new into the exercise regimen i would say the safest bet for you is to do walking walking is the safest form of exercise that you could do or you could do something like a prenatal yoga prenatal yoga also works wonders during pregnancy because it really relaxes down your mind and body and also prepares your body for labor by strengthening those muscles so again, when I talk about walking, it's not that, you know, strolling that usually, you know, uh, couples come and then they're like, no, every day we're going for this walk. We're going in the evening. No, we're not talking about that Lala walk that you're going to have in the evening post dinner. We're talking about a good, uh, you know, 30 minutes walk. I uh, prefer saying like, you know, have a brisk walk. You know, you can tell your husband or your friend that 30 minutes we're going to walk and then we can just, you know, stroll around having a gossip session or, or talk about a day but uh, that brisk walk is really really important but any point any exercise which is going to overheat your body or which is going to cause you shortness of breath stop it immediately and take a period of rest you do not want to do any kind of activities even in your daily life or when you're exercising which is going to overheat your body or which is going to actually make you feel really breathless so walking is really good and uh, you know all these exercises can be safely taken up in consultation with your doctor uh, only if the woman is having conditions like a placenta previa or a short cervix incompetent cervix is when we actually say okay she needs some amount of rest where that could be a threat to the pregnancy uh you know exercises can be a threat to a pregnancy but uh, again after a safe period of time she can resume back these exercises but others if you're healthy if you're normal there is nothing attached with your pregnancy go ahead and start doing your exercises now what are these exercises that you can safely start you know i actually say that start these as early as possible so squats squats is an excellent form of exercise and you will realize that squats is the only thing which is going to help you even during labor so even in labor uh, you know even the hospitals would actually kind of suggest you do like a squat or do like a duck walk because that's going to help you in that dilation which you are actually trying to achieve so initially when you are actually starting i always say that first trimester second trimester you can do it independently because your center of gravity though it is a little shift, uh, shifted you still have some balance and support but in your third trimester always do it under someone's guidance or take support and do either you could take the support of the wall or you know hold something really sturdy and strong and then go down and do the squats or else you can do it along with your partner just ask your husband to just you know accompany you for this little set of exercises and again in turn it's your time to bond and you know prepare yourself for the labor that's going to actually uh, come ahead so uh, start initially with like for, you know 8 to 15 uh, as you can tolerate and slowly slowly try to increase the more squats you do the better it is because it's just going to strengthen your pelvic flow muscles and also going to help you in the cervical dilation later butterfly position again can be done at any point uh, during the day you can do it while you know you're sitting and watching the tv just sit in a butterfly position and watch the tv uh having food sit down and just uh you know just have uh have your foot while in a being in a butterfly position again butterfly position increases the pelvic uh outlet diameter and again in turn helps you in strengthening those muscles over there side leg races is an excellent form of exercise which you can do uh all throughout your pregnancy and also something that you can do in labor especially if you are opting for an epidural so uh, you know side leg races is nothing but lying down to one side and just lifting your one leg make sure that you are on a sturdy surface so like a non slippery yoga mat you can use that and just lie down and uh, raise your legs and make sure that you are doing 10 to 15 on each side kegels exercise you can do it at any time so giggles exercise is nothing uh, but the muscles if i have to teach you that just think that if i tell you to just hold your pee at this moment just control your urine at this time so what are the muscles that you're trying to squeeze in it's exactly the same that's the muscles that you have to actually focus during kegels but 
everyone does kegels wrong now how to do kegels is uh, nothing but when you are trying to exhale you're trying to squeeze in those muscles and when you're trying to inhale you're going to relax those muscles see you can do this even now like when i'm telling you or you can do it at your workplace you can do it when you're sitting alone you really do not require any preparation when you're doing it and the more you're going to do the better you're going to strengthen those muscles down there and kegels exercise uh, is uh, something that you can start uh, by doing around you know 8 to 10 initially and slowly slowly once you develop the hang of this you can act to do as much as 30 in a day and it's really really good because it, this is going to actually help you even with your urinary incontinence which actually develops later so uh, these are some of the safest exercises you can start practicing from now onwards uh, and till the time of labor now let's understand about labor and I'm, I'm sure everyone's here for this you know this is what we all are actually looking forward for so uh, you, first, before we deal into labor, I want you to understand what is a full term labor. Now, any baby which has completed 259 days inside your womb safely, that is 37 weeks inside your womb, and steps into this world is called as a full term normal delivery baby. Okay, uh, I mean full term vaginal delivery, or if the baby has taken any other route of coming into this world, uh, it's called as a full term baby. So in our Indian system, we actually wait up from 37 weeks to 40 weeks, six days. Now again, this depends from doctors to doctor practice how how much they would like to wait. But it is safe to actually wait till 40 weeks, six days, and actually allowing your body to give you signals uh, for the uh, for the labor to start its on its own the uh, the reason why we say that is because 37 weeks is the marks time that baby's complete growth and development inside the body takes place the last organ for the uh, for the baby to actually develop in labor uh, I mean during pregnancy is lungs and once the lungs are completely developed for the baby the baby actually starts giving signal to the body body and that's how your contraction starts and all that you know progresses so any mommy i have seen like you know so many mommies just asking no my doctors are actually asking me to get induced uh, i'm just tired of this pregnancy i i am i because and there is an auspicious date which is coming so uh, should i just go get induced and just take this baby out see you need to understand that if your body has not started giving you signs of uh, any labor that means your baby is still growing inside you okay so wait till the uh, till your body actually gives you those signs for the labor to actually begin and if yes if the baby is coming anytime after 37 weeks it's a safe time for the baby to come so and let's understand what are these pre-labor signs how do you understand that you're actually going into labor so somewhere around i'll be actually taking you through uh phase by phase of how these signs actually approach you so somewhere about like 15 days prior you're aware your body is getting kind of prepared for this labor what usually happens is the baby's head drops so if i have to show you that so now this this pelvis so uh, what usually happens is that the baby's head uh, is kind of floating up over here all throughout your pregnancy that's why you feel all these fetal movements so the baby could be like in a head down position or the baby could be you know the bum down which is this position where the legs are folded up and the bum is down or but the baby could be in a transverse position but at some point of time the baby has to drop down and the baby has to come in a position where it can actually start its process for labor and start uh, making its way to come into this world so around 34 weeks to 36 weeks what happens is is that your baby's head drops and it comes and falls into this pelvic uh, you know outlet so now you see the baby's head is locked the baby does not actually move from here the head is kind of locked like your pelvis is the lock and the baby is the key so uh, once your baby's head gets locked over here this is the time like most of the women if you see from 34 weeks to around 37 weeks of time they say i felt like a very sharp shooting pain and you know i'm having this cramping sensation which i am feeling and it was like a sharp pain which i felt and suddenly my stomach has kind of dropped like something which was looking tight like a watermelon and which was really high now it looks more pear shaped it has kind of dropped and you have a uh, you know part of flesh which is kind of drooping down now 
that is nothing but a signal that yes your baby has taken the first step and it has kind of come down and engaged in the pelvic outlet so that the baby can start making its way out so this is one of the first things that have actually happened following this uh, from 34 weeks onwards your body also kind of gives you some practice contraction now uh, practice contraction is nothing we call it as the false alarms or false labor pains or braxton hicks now braxton hicks is nothing but very unpleasant kind of tightening that you will actually feel around your tummy okay so uh, it's uh, basically uh, some uh, you know tightening and tugging and pulling that you will feel superficially around your tummy and uh, whereas it's not uh, something which keeps uh, progressing it comes and it goes and it's not something that it's going to build up in pain intensity or as like contractions where it's going to become regular and uh, cervical changes all throughout your labor your cervix is actually long it is thick and closed okay and it, it is much behind like it's very posterior but from 34 to 36 onwards when uh, weeks onwards when your doctor actually starts checking you internally they kind of tell you remarks like yes the cervix is kind of soft it's come a little forward it's shortening so these are the kind of cervical changes which is happening your cervix has to become short it has to become soft and it has to come ahead for this baby to actually stepping into this world so this is something which you actually start to experience around 15 days prior now 48 hours prior okay now these symptoms are not going to be you know one after the other or are going to be in order but these are more or less likely the symptoms that most of the women actually face first is loss of mucus plug now again loss of mucus plug for some women it starts even happening two weeks before now because mucus plug is nothing but a small stopper kind of mucusy plug which is there around your cervix and uh, you know when the cervix is kind of opening up and it's becoming softer and more open this mucus plug kind of falls off and then again makes more way for the baby to actually come out now a mucus plug if it is coming you know when you will be able to see that you will be having a very mucusy discharge which is yellowish in color or brownish red in color uh, but at any point of time if this is actually uh, coming along with a lot of fresh bleed or uh, you know it is uh, very fresh red in color you need to go to the hospital because you really don't know what is the source of this bleeding is it just the mucus plug or is there some other internal bleeding which is happening at no point in your pregnancy when your labor is starting you should not be having any fresh bleeding which is happening if there is fresh bleeding happening you need to walk into the hospital second loose motions now many mothers uh you know actually say just hours before they went into labor or days before they were experiencing loose motions they were having like increased bowel moments now why this happens is because everything is kind of relaxing down in your body and especially in the lower abdominal region there's a lot of pressure pulling and tugging which is actually happening because of which your uh you know in a gi system is also kind of completely smoothened down and relaxed down at this point uh, because of which that you will be experiencing soft bowel movements now it is different from having loose motions like in terms of diarrhea okay now if you're passing three or four loose motions in a day then definitely you need to go and check with your doctor am i getting diarrhea because that is something where you're having three to four bowel movements definitely means that you have diarrhea and not uh you know this is not a sign of labor but if you're having just very soft bowel movements whenever you're going uh you know one or two times in a day you're just having soft bowel movements that means that yes somewhere my body is getting prepared for labor intense back pain we know that when contractions actually start contractions actually begin from the back so many women actually uh, kind of say that you know their back is really cramping and hurting and all through the pregnancy they were fine but suddenly since the last few weeks kind of really excruciating pain that they're actually feeling towards the back that's nothing but you know your pelvis is trying to flex and expand itself for making more uh, way for the baby and because the baby's head dropped inside the pelvis 
the baby is also trying to make movements down. So again, because of which you actually try, uh, experience this intense back pain. And lastly, this is surely something which happens with most of the women. Suddenly, they have these high spurts of energy, which we call as nesting. Uh, this is nothing but, you know, you will suddenly feel like you are you want to do everything for the arrival of your baby. You want to suddenly go for shopping. You want to clean the house. You want to cook food and keep everything ready. You suddenly feel very elated. And most of the times I have these women kind of messaging me, Mika, I feel really happy today. I really don't know. I was so, uh, on my bed for the last few days and I really did not know what was happening with me. And But today I feel energetic. Today I feel really happy. And by evening, they'll be like, yeah, I'm going into labor. I've started getting my contraction. So nesting is something which women actually feel around the time of labor. And this is something which I have usually seen that it is always accompanied along with labor. So if you are actually in your last weeks of pregnancy and you are actually experiencing this high uh, energy spurts, just know that, yes, it's about time that you're going into labor. Now, let's understand labor. Now, there is only one way that you know that you're going into labor is regular contractions. Your contractions have to be longer, stronger, and closer. They have they keep coming periodically. If it was a false labor, they just come and they just go off. And, you know, probably they come like once in a day and then they're like gone or probably somewhere in between and they're gone. They do not actually intensify. They do not keep coming at regular intervals. But uh, regular contractions keep coming at regular intervals. And the more activity that you're going to actually give to, uh, to your body, it's going to actually increase these contractions. That's exactly the reason why we say in labor, keep moving, keep doing something, uh, do your exercises, use your birth ball, because the more you're going to move, the more activity that you're going to do, the stronger the contractions is what you're going to get and shorter the labor women think that okay i i can be just on the bed and just kind of relax but you know the more you're going to kind of relax and be on the bed you are stalling the labor your contractions are not going to come as frequent and if they're not going to come very frequent the labor is going to be longer and more painful so make sure that you're continuously moving any kind of activity is just going to increase the intensity and the frequency of the contractions now, only two things that you need to know about your contraction is the duration and the frequency. Now, duration is nothing like, now it's 11.35 and your first contraction came at 11.35. How long the contraction lasted? So initially when it starts, it, it would be somewhere for like, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. So your first contraction came, it just, it was there for like 20, 30 seconds and it died off. Now your second contraction comes around by, you know, 45 by 11.45. That means the frequency of every contraction is 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes, you're getting one contraction, which was for like 20 seconds long. So these are the two things that you have to keep in uh, your mind when you actually talking about contraction. So you have these lot of apps that are available, uh, which you can download and kind of, uh, you know, time your contractions or probably, you know, it becomes as easy as because contractions always has a pattern. You can kind of even just remember it mentally. Your husband can actually help you. But whenever you're going into the uh, hospital, these are the two things that the doctor is going to ask you. What was the duration of the contraction and what was the frequency? And always remember that every contraction gives you some period of relaxation you will have some period of rest okay it's not that contraction is coming going coming going no you will have some amount of relaxation you will have some gaps only towards the end of labor is when this period of relaxation kind of decreases but all throughout the labor you will have ample amount of time where your body peaks a contraction it relaxes down and then you have a peaceful time and then again it comes it's not that constantly you're going to be in pain okay so let's uh you know mo moving ahead let's understand how do we actually okay uh let's learn when to go to the hospital okay so many women actually uh, ask me, when do I go to the hospital? Once I know my duration of the contraction, once I know the frequency of contraction, when do I actually go to the hospital? So I ideally say that 
go to the hospital when your contractions are regular and they are 20 minutes apart because uh, there are a few things that you need to consider over here. Now, if you are a second time mother, you definitely know that uh, the uh, duration of labor is going to be shorter. It's not going to be that long as your previous one because your body is kind of used with the previous activity uh, which had taken place and it has a memory of that so your muscles are already used to that kind of pressure which was which had previously happened and your uterus uh, can contract more faster and you can go into labor faster so 20 minutes is a good period of time that you can keep if they are 20 minutes apart it's uh, it's the right time to move to the hospital if your water has broken now it's not like the one that i've shown in the picture water is not going to break like that it's only in the movies that you actually see that the water just gushes out like that when your water actually breaks it's going to be more like a trickle it's going to be like a leaky sensation that you're going to have okay now if your water breaks and irrespective of the fact that if your labor pain has begun or not that is your contraction you need to go to the hospital uh, in that case i never say wait back at the home and you have time because what's happening is uh, your uh, the water bags which is your amniotic sac is a sterile environment once that has kind of broken down there are chances that the baby can be actually exposed to more infection you're under a clock then once your water breaks and if your contractions have not started you're actually under a clock of 24 hours the hospital only waits for 24 hours till the time you can actually deliver this baby but uh, you know beyond 24 hours no hospital will wait and you actually want to be in the hospital to make sure that you can do things to get this labor started as soon as possible thirdly if you and your partner are feeling really nervous more than you i feel if the partner if the partner is having a nervous breakdown please go to the hospital we really do not want two patients at home and you know uh, we want the partner to be completely fine and in control to be actually supporting you at that time but if the partner is kind of having a mental breakdown at that time please go to the hospital because uh, he would be no uh, point uh, to support you at that time and uh, lastly if the hospital is very far away you know that you stay really far away from the hospital so i do uh, in that case do not even wait till 20 minutes you actually can start moving a little earlier when your contractions are even half an hour apart so uh you know it, these are few of the things that you can keep in your mind when you are actually uh planning when you have to go to the hospital it's not that the labor starts and immediately you go to the hospital no uh these are some of the uh, things that you need to keep in mind before going to the hospital okay now what happens next when you go to the hospital so firstly they will check you uh they will actually see if there is actually real progress uh, of this labor which is happening or was this like a false alarm which the woman got and she got panicked and she is here if you are in labor definitely you will be admitted and you will be under supervision but in any which ways even uh, you know if you're in labor and you're admitted i always say that labor should be allowed to progress naturally the more you're going to intervene and give interruptions to your labor the lesser likely that you know your labor is going to progress and you're going to have a shorter labor the more you're going to kind of uh, just provide a lot of other things in terms of all these interventions the more you're going to stall the labor so uh, be patient with your body your body knows it has given you the signal that it has started definitely it will yeah, allow you to progress naturally and get this baby out uh, all you need to be is patient and allow the body to do its work so let's understand what all other things that you can do in labor that everyone's been actually waiting for. So, uh, you know, I'll help you with a lot of tricks and uh, some comfort measures and coping strategies that we'll be actually discussing when you are in labor and some things that your partner can do. But I always say labor smarter and not harder because uh, pain is something that you actually require in labor. Pain is not your villain. Pain is your hero. So uh, if you're going to actually perceive pain as a bad thing, then definitely it's uh, that you're going to be in that whole loop of suffering. And that's not what we actually want. So first thing is you need to be stress free because the lesser the stress, the lesser the perception of pain and lesser the perception of pain, 
faster is going to be your labor. So uh, the best labor management tool that I say is stress management. If you can actually manage your stress and relax down and calm down and exactly know what's exactly happening with your body, you will be able to actually respond to your body in a much better way. OK, so I will take you through some things that you can actually do during labor. First, avoid screaming. But you will be like, that's what we are conditioned to actually see and hear from everywhere. Like movie shows that, uh, you know, uh, everywhere that I hear from experiences that the woman has been screaming. But what you need to understand that the more you're going to scream, see, when I scream, Ah, like this, what am I doing? I'm just tensing up my muscles. I'm just tensing up everything. The, your body is going to be more rigid around that time. Your body is going to go into a state of tension. And you know that if your muscles are rigid and stressed and kind of are in a state of tension, you are just going to block the way for your baby. Because you need to relax. See, if the baby is taking efforts and coming down, the, babe, uh, the muscles also need to be kind of Relax. If you're going to stress and, uh, you know, pull your muscles inside by screaming, you're just again decreasing that blood supply and oxygen supply and in turn making things more tight for your baby to actually come. So first thing, just relax and avoid screaming because screaming really, really does not help. In fact, women who continuously keep screaming, you can actually, uh, you know, ask your doctor or, you know, you can probably ask uh, uh, your friends who have actually had previous experiences, they would actually say they had a tougher time pushing the baby who were constantly screaming. Uh, but if they were much more in control and, you know, used more natural sounds, like using sounds like, this is OK, this is much better rather than screaming. ah. OK, so, you know, uh, using sounds is good, but make sure that you are not blocking the passage for your baby. Second, visiting the bathroom. Now, this is something women actually forget. They feel that they're going to actually go to the washroom. What's going to happen is, uh, you know, probably what if they labor down in the washroom itself? And what if the baby falls or uh, what if, uh, you know, the labor progresses very fast? No, you exactly will know when your baby is just, you know, there and when you uh, have to be in a position that you will be uh, able to push but if you're not going to visit the washroom you're doing more harm to yourself and the baby because baby is constantly trying to push itself out and you know that your bladder and vagina are like closely you know if you see in that picture also vagina is here this is the vagina and this is the bladder the bladder is going to be full it's going to press down on the vagina OK, now if you, it's going to press down and close the vaginal entry, how is the baby going to come? Right. So if you're going to release this bladder, it creates more space for the vagina. So make sure that you're going frequently drinking water and going to the washroom and sitting on that toilet chair. Now, sitting on the toilet chair, you will actually experience this during labor. That's the best position that will give you some com kind of comfort and relaxation from pain, because that position is a squatting position. When you are in a squatting position, the more the pelvic diameter increases, it opens up. You're peeing, making more space for the baby. And also there is increased blood circulation uh, because of which you are able to actually have lesser perception of pain. So, you know, visit the bathroom. Do not forget to go and pee. Intermittently ask your partner, please take me to the washroom. I need to go and pee. Breathe. Now, breathing is something which is going to take you in labor. The power of breathing is something that you will realize once the labor gets done. So breathing is really, really powerful. You will realize that even if you have not practiced anything, but you will be actually coping with your labor pains with some kind of breathing because you will uh, your body will actually feel more calm and more relaxed the, uh, the more deeper you're going to actually breathe. So we will practice just one uh, you know kind of uh breathing uh, exercise uh, i uh, there are a lot of breathing exercises that you can do but i always say that we all have an innate ability to kind of breathe uh, differently in different kind of situations uh, but however like you know if i have to teach you one from here today uh, sorry i actually teach you the de stressor breath so uh, de stressor breath is something that you can do all throughout your labor and this is going to really help you, okay? This is nothing but placing one hand on your tummy and one hand on your chest, okay? And when you're actually breathing in, when you're inhaling, 
you breathe to the count of four. So you, you breathe in like one, two, three, four. And when you exhale, you exhale down, putting more pressure on your abdomen and your lower you know, pelvic floor, uh, thinking that you're pushing and relaxing down the muscles there and pushing this baby out. And you exhale out to the count of six, OK? So uh, and when you actually breathe in, you actually breathe in all that goodness and try to actually expand your tummy. OK, when you're trying to breathe in. So, uh, you know, we can practice this together. Place one hand on the chest, one hand on your tummy. Close your eyes. OK, uh, just focus all your energy on your baby at this moment and try to breathe in on my count. Inhale, two, three, four. OK, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. OK. Just relax. Let's take one more deep breath in. OK, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Just take a deep breath and just relax it. OK, feels better. So uh, this is something that you can do all throughout your labor. OK, there are different types of breathing exercises that you will get, but you will realize that this is something that you will end up doing in labor. And what this does is, first of all, you're just uh, doing a deep breath and kind of just releasing the uh, you know uh, stress down. Secondly, you're, you're counting inside your mind. So when you're actually counting, what you're actually doing is uh, distracting your mind again and you want to actually make sure that you breathe till that count somewhere in unconsciously so that you're able to you know sustain longer so this breath really helps you but again what i say is uh start practicing this from 28 week onwards okay do a set of five even in labor like do a set of five uh five de-stressor breaths and then take a period of relaxation so because that five sets that you will be doing is something that you will uh, that will take you through that one contraction at that time and five breaths you relax down then you can relax and then you can just wait till the next contraction actually hits you where you can do this again so start practicing this from 28 week onwards if you do not really do this you keep it in your mind and then you will be like okay i can do it uh, during the day of labor sometimes you might not be able to do it you will end up just hyperventilating or not just uh, being happy the way you actually thought it in your mind. So everything that needs to be done needs to be practiced well before, you know, that uh, before labor approaches. Movement. Movement is very, very, very important. As I had actually uh, discussed that the more you are going to actually move, the better you are actually going to able to kind of uh, get the contraction started and keep this labor progressing. So make sure that you, you're making the natural force from uh, you, the nature, which is use of gravity, because we know that anything which is in an upright position is tend to fall. If you're going to be in positions where you're standing, sitting, kneeling, squatting or side lying or, you know, even kneeling down on the bed. What is going to happen is it's going to use the force of gravity and also you, it makes easier for your baby to come down more smoothly rather than where you're continuously lying on the bed and your pelvis is not able to kind of flex and move. The birth canal is anyways kind of tilted because you're on your back, you're putting more pressure on your back and the baby has to kind of struggle down through a tunnel. OK, so, it, you know, when we actually uh, uh, just imagine if you have to crawl through a tunnel, it's more difficult. But we actually tilt the tunnel upside down. And if we actually ask the, uh, you know, tell the baby, it will actually slide down more smoothly because force of gravity. So movements is very, very important. Now, again, think of it as, you know, if you wanted to actually remove a pillow from a pillow cover, you just flip the pillow cover like this. It's not going to actually come. You, you know, you tug and pull and you make some movement and then pull the uh, you know pillow out that's exactly how movements are actually necessary the more you're going to keep moving in labor the better the uh, baby is going to able to come and descend down 
massages during labor very very important now your partner can help you with massages now what are the areas that you can actually take massage a lower back massage they can actually kind of you know just warm their hands and then kind of press down on your back uh, neck and shoulder massage is again really really good just as as simple as pressing down over here like sometimes what happens is lower back massage is the best place to kind of give the massage because that's where the whole tension builds up in labor but if uh, you know sometimes women get really irritable and they will be like no don't touch me around at this time uh, really don't i really don't require this massage that time partners can just stick to the neck and shoulder because this is again somewhere all your muscles are getting tensed and you want to make it relaxed during labor because the more you're going to re be relaxed the better the labor is going to progress so partners can actually again help in the neck and shoulder massage they can give a counter pressure now counter pressure is nothing but uh, when you're getting each contraction you can actually tell your partner to kind of squeeze your hips during the uh, contraction so what happens is when you get two unpleasant sensations at the same time your brain actually gets confused and it takes away the perception of pain now it could be even by taking a comb okay you take a comb in labor and you keep it in your hand each time that you're actually getting a contraction keep pressing on the comb now what happens is because of the uh, you know pain impulse that you're giving from the hand these impulses reach the brain more faster and the brain gets kind of confused it takes away the sensation of the pain that the contraction is giving and in turn releases a little more endorphins which is your painkillers and the woman feels a little better like comb is an excellent tool that you can actually use in, in labor uh some women like just gentle strokes on the abdomen it's just like you know just stroking the abdomen uh during the contraction now in whichever way that you're doing the massage make sure that it is gentle but firm okay we do not want a lot of pressure but at the same time it should be comforting enough that it relaxes you during the labor we do not want a hard deep tissue massage over there we just want a gentle massage at that time which can keep you go, uh, going and also touch is really good because the more your partner is going to touch the better the oxytocin release in your body and better your contractions are going to approach you so touch is really really important and massages help wonders during labor now there are some natural pain relief methods it's as simple as just relaxing just kind of you know uh, just relax go, just taking a nap because you uh, need to know that it's i know there's a lot of excitement right from the time that your labor pain kicks in and you know that okay this baby is going to come down anytime soon but you also need to understand that yes the baby will be coming down soon and you need a lot of energy to push this baby so just be as much relaxed as possible whenever you're getting uh, you know periods of rest try to take a small nap try to take that power nap because if you're going to waste all your energy initially later towards in the labor when you have to actually use the energy to push and you know do more you will be tired and exhausted so make sure that you're relaxing imagery imagery could be nothing but just thinking about your favorite holiday or your favorite memory about your honeymoon your baby shower anything that really makes you happy so you know i always say create like a album in your phone and keep just looking at those photos it really takes away your mind away from the pain diversion techniques could be as simple as chanting om like you know some people like uh, like to chant om some people meditate you can continue to do that or a uh, binge watch on something like i know of a lady who uh, actually liked friends she downloaded the whole series of uh, you know the 10 season of friends and she made sure that she was just watching friends all throughout the labor and that really comforted her so it could be anything that works for you okay so so uh, diversion techniques it could be like i know of another woman who liked listening to rock music when she was in labor so she just kept asking her friends also give me good rock music suggestions she put on her earpods and then she was just blasting the music and listening to it and using uh, all the movements that helped her to progress uh, you know into labor so diversion techniques could be anything that really helps you at that time now what are the medical pain relief options that you will be getting epidural an analgesia is something that you get uh, for normal delivery it's nothing but a regional anesthesia which is given and uh, uh, you know we, they kind of give it to you through a catheter and you can actually kind of uh, 
monitor the doses that you actually want. Uh, it is good. It is a good option if you want to have a normal delivery, but you really cannot manage the pain and you want some period of rest, you can offer an epidural analgesia. Spinal block is something which is a local, uh, you know, uh, uh, anesthesia or a anesthesia which is given during the C-section. It is a little modified from the epidural. So again, in uh, spinal anesthesia, what happens is a spinal block. You are completely conscious. You're completely awake of uh, awake, awake and aware of what's happening around. You can see the, uh, you know, your baby being born, uh, but uh, everything below down your spine is completely numb. So that's why uh, the, you know, the surgery can take place smoothly without uh, causing much distress to you. And again, it's different from the epidural because uh, you, it is not uh, regulated with a catheter. They just give you a injection and just numb you down completely down your spine and then again uh, the baby is actually taken out so epidural and spinal block uh, spinal block for c-section and epidural for normal delivery which is again given etanox which is again laughing gas which is widely available in a lot of hospitals these days like i have seen in a lot of hospitals that they are actually getting the laughing gas uh, so you can keep the mask and you can actually take in some amount of nitrous oxide, which again helps you in kind of relieving that pain down and taking the sensation away from the pain. But again, it works for some. It doesn't work for some. OK, but this is one of the latest uh, pain relief options which is available uh, now in the hospitals. It is important for you to know about C-section as well, because as much as we talk about it, uh, sometimes we really do not know what comes our way. And if it was a C-section, it is important for you to know why a C-section is done. So uh, see, first thing that I say that if it is a planned one, if there was a pre-existing condition, like the mother was having a placenta previa, the mother was a diabetic, or she had many other complications associated, Definitely there would, uh, you know, and she has taken this inter best interest of herself and the baby. Yes, it's called a planned C-section. Unplanned because there could be chances that your water broke. You tried everything to get this labor started, but you are running out of the time of the clock because we know that hospitals would only wait for 24 hours. After that, what? you'll have to go in for a C-section to get this baby out because you know that the more the baby is going to be exposed with uh, with the amniotic sac broken, uh, the more the chances of infection. Or you have tried everything, but your labor is just not progressing. Your cervix is not dilating. You need to go in for an unplanned C-section. If the baby is not moving down, if the baby is in IUGR or having signs of fetal distress, or if, the, if there are chances that there is some kind of infection within the mother itself. See, all these are very valid reasons whether it is planned or unplanned but what i'm totally against is where you know kind of people opt it as a method of convenience because you really do not understand that though the you know the route by which the baby comes the uh, the thing is very easy but your period of recovery is much much longer it's very longer and then uh you know that's where the, all these ppd symptoms and all all of that start creeping in so you have to understand that c-section is still a major abdominal surgery and it should be still considered as something a surgery to save lives and not something which is opted for as a method of convenience thinking on okay i have this shubh or uh, you know, I am tired of this pregnancy or my, uh, you know, husband or in-laws want this particular date. This is a very good date. These are not the reasons for a C-section. Uh, so I think we're done with today's session. So, uh, you know, I would like to say that birth is a new beginning. Welcome it with positivity. OK, rather than just being stressed and, you know, continuously be uh, thinking what exactly can I do? Uh, just embrace this journey and just enjoy the space. And I'm sure all of you all are going to ace your labor during the labor day. OK, so, yeah. Thank you so much, Mekha. It was super, super informative. Uh, and just just take like a breather, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been like, I think it's been like 45, 50 minutes. We have been yeah. continuously speaking, yeah. Um, so meanwhile, we have a few questions over here, right? All right. Uh, so we can go one by one. Uh, so we have the first one from Shelpa, which is, can we have tea during pregnancy? Absolutely. Why not? So uh, see, again, 
coffee tea uh, even these days the trend of matcha is going on everything has some amount of caffeine in fact for the fact that all your uh, beverages uh, you know all these uh, carbonated beverages also has some amount of caffeine but uh, you know uh, you need to understand what's the amount of caffeine these things have now coffee ha has the highest amount and these carbonated drinks tea has a, a lesser amount uh, you it's not bad to have tea but you can have like about uh, 200 ml so about two cups in a day uh, don't go overboard uh, like i know you are like uh, chai and tea so much that you want to keep sipping it at uh, you know regular intervals whenever you're feeling a little tired or have a headache but during pregnancy we try to tell to limit it to two cups a day you can ha safely have like two cups a day and not more than that awesome thank you uh yeah moving to the next question we have from farheen which is our mucus plug and breaking of water same uh no they're two different things dear so uh see mucus plug is nothing but a small little stopper which is there at the tip of your cervix okay it's like a small blob of mucus it's very translucent and sticky substance but it is what it's doing all throughout your pregnancy is that it is acting like a stopper around the cervix and not letting the cervix open up and uh, let the labor begin so uh you know when that kind of falls off you will be able to see when you go to the washroom towards the last weeks of pregnancy you will be able to see that there's a very sticky discharge which would be coming okay and that sticky discharge would be kind of a little yellowish tinged or kind uh, or would be like a little stained with blood in terms of like a brownish red uh, color that is how the mucus plug kind of looks water break is different now water break is uh you know just like how they show in movies you're not going to have like a you know gush of water flowing down but it, it it is going to be more like a trickle which is going to be there so how do you understand that is first of all you'll have a very wet sensation that something is just leaking from down but still you're not able to understand you go and sit somewhere for a while and you get up after two to three minutes you will see like a water blotch wherever you're sitting there will be like a you know print of water which would be there because your water is continuously trickling down so you know that okay and water break you really do not have to start panicking just because your water broke okay you it's good uh, is you know that once your water breaks you need to move to the hospital but just make sure that you're checking for when your water broke amount of water which is leaking out the color of the water now your water uh, your amniotic fluid is clear it's transparent okay so but if it is discolored you again need to inform that and you also need to check for the odor now odor is basically amniotic fluid is odorless it does not have any smell but at any point if you're sensing some pungent smell or some uh, you know very foul smelling fluid definitely move into the hospital so these are two different things Got it. Got it. Uh, so, uh, we, we have we have many questions right now. So let's just try to you know go through them quickly and maybe let's prioritize the labor ones. And you know yeah. we have a few questions coming for pregnancy. So I guess we can cater to them at the end. So the okay. next is from Jinal, which is uh, usage advantages and disadvantages of epidural and labor. Okay. So uh, see, epidural. Uh, it's like it, it's a safest uh, kind of. Uh, pain relief options that you can actually go for uh, now you can actually uh, but you need to know when you need to take an epidural that's what I actually say when you are going into labor immediately when you are there uh, in the hospital uh, and when the doctor starts checking you anytime when they actually tell you that you are six centimeter dilated I would always say that take an epidural from that time onwards if you really want to take an epidural and you feel that you really cannot bear this pain anymore but if you are anywhere before that I would say avoid take an epidural because what you know that epidural is going is it's a regional anesthesia it's going to completely uh, calm down your muscles it's going to relax down your muscles and uterus is a big chunk of muscle and it's continuously contracting and you need that contraction so if you're going to relax it down what's going to happen is your contractions are not going to progress and that's going to lead into a longer labor your cervix is not going to dilate as faster but if you have been progressing till six, six seven centimeters you're not able to take it you take an epidural for some period of time you take that period 
period of rest, you gain back that energy, then you can stop it because you know that it's regulated. It's through a catheter. You stop the dos dosage of it. Once the epidural veins off, you can get back on action again. And sometimes it really helps the woman. So it ha and uh, there are no really major side effects to having an epidural. It is one of the safest options. Uh, so you can, if you are really wanting to have one, you can start discussing with your doctor and you can have it. Got it. Uh, great. Uh, yeah. The next question is from Bhavna, which is, uh, what about stress ball? Like, can we use it for squeezing? Stress ball, can we use it for uh, squeezing? Okay. Uh, so again, stress ball. Okay, I understood the small smiley ball that you would be talking about. So again, stress ball and comb, uh, comb uh, does uh, two different purposes. Now, why I say use a comb? Uh, stress ball is not going to kind of help you. It might be a diversion technique probably. We can probably actually help you. But comb has a different purpose because the comb, uh, if you see the tooth is sharp, Okay, so kind if when you just press down on the comb, what is happening is you're giving a very unpleasant sensation to your hand. The, again, there is some kind of pain impulses which actually travels to the brain. So the brain gets confused. There is contraction pain which is coming and again something which is coming from the comb. Brain gets confused and releases more endorphins. So stress ball will not help you with combating with pain, but comb will really help you. So use a comb instead. Got it. Uh, yeah, Junal and Bhavita's questions are uh, on what kind of food items we can have during pregnancy. Let's let's cater to them at the end. Uh, okay. Let's cater to the labor ones first. So Tanima's question is, what if the labor doesn't start till the due date? Like, is it safe to wait till the labor naturally starts? Okay, you should wait till the labor starts naturally. Okay, so. Uh, I, you know, it, the, this is a whole lot of thing which we actually discuss in our classes also. Due date is a myth, okay? Now, the only way to make you understand that is uh, whenever you went to the hospital, the first thing that was asked to you was what was your last day of periods, okay? And it's near, and from that last day of periods, what they actually do is they actually calculate nine months plus seven days. That's the whole formula worldwide which is available and then your due date is actually given to you. But it's merely impossible that you were pregnant on the day uh, that you were ha having your periods. It's nearly impossible. You know that it again took your body to have another two weeks of time for the ovulation to begin, for this conception to happen. Okay, so from your due date, you again have additional two weeks of time that you can safely wait. And I always say, let the let your body give you signs that your labor is beginning. Because uh, the last organ to develop is the lungs. So once the lungs are developed and the surfactant level actually increases, your contraction starts actually inside the body. So why do you want to just kind of disturb the whole natural process which is happening inside and go and intervene with that? Just be patient. If baby is just there inside, uh, I would say the baby is taking more time to grow and develop and be more cozy inside. So just be patient with your bodies. Uh, yeah. Next question is uh, from Priyanka, which is what kind of exercises we should do for normal delivery? When should we start and any food items which help in labor? Okay, so uh, more than food items, see food items uh, may or may not help you, but exercises really, really, really will help you. Uh, that's what I can say. And what, see, starting right throughout your pregnancy, you can keep doing all your exercises, whatever antenatal exercises that you've been uh, doing. But uh, from 37, especially from 36 to 37 week onwards, you could do uh, more squats, okay? Squats is something which is really going to help you. Uh, do supported squats, duck walk, make sure that you are having around five to ten duck walks on each side that you're doing uh again uh stairs using the stairs is really really good do it uh have someone uh, along with you hold the railings and not walking down straight the stairs but using the railing and walking sideways okay going down like this the sideways rather than just moving uh, straight down uh stairs uh and uh, squats are the excellent exercises if you have a birth ball at home try and spend at least 15 to 20 minutes on the birth ball you can simply sit and bounce on the birth ball sway on the birth ball or do 
uh, hip circles like circling movements on the birth ball these are the things that can help you now food items again a lot of things like raspberry tea then you know you have this ghee uh, see again what these things are going to do is uh, soften your uh, you know abdominal muscles which again gives you a sensation of uh, loose stools or you know increased bowel movements and which in turn puts down a lot of pressure in your lower abdominal area and this in turn which the uh, you know because see if you have a lot of ghee what is going to happen the your body is going to actually end up with diarrhea and that is going to cause a lot of cramping because of the diarrhea which is going to happen and that in turn gives you a lot of tugging and pulling and pressure which is perceived as contraction and might help in dilation of the cervix but uh, nothing like exercises so food items do not go and have all the ghee castor oil and all of that if you want it gives you some sense of peace of mind have it but more than that exercises will help you uh next is from uh, smriti which is from when is it safe to consume raspberry tea before delivery like uh anywhere from 37 week onwards you can start having these raspberry tea uh, castor oil all of these things which actually tell you to uh, you know they kind of promote an inducing labor okay. from 37 week onwards not before that okay. uh next question is from rajavi which is uh, she is 24 weeks pregnant so is it okay to start practicing squats and other exercise for normal labor and how much time should she walk at 24 weeks pregnant okay so uh, uh, you know you could actually uh, walk for about 30 minutes a day uh, if you i i i would say that if you've been someone who's been doing exercises uh, even before your pregnancy continue to do it you can do your squats even now no problem but if you are someone who is new into the whole exercises and have been doing all this now start doing it from 28 week onwards okay from 28 week onwards it's a safe time to start doing all of these things uh, and uh, you can do any kind of exercise like even in terms of walking squatting yoga or any other forms of exercises for 30 minutes a day but at any point you feel like your energy levels are very down and it's kind of overheating your body stop it it's fine uh, but 30 minutes a day is a good uh, you know time got it uh next question is from neetu which is uh, so she is someone with a lot of anxiety and happened to visit the labor room once a couple of weeks back and got triggered by noise of another woman in labor so how can she calm herself down in such situations when she herself goes into labor and you know with such scenarios happening around first thing take some good childbirth classes okay because what's going to happen is when you're going to take some good childbirth classes and when you are going prepared you're not going to be in the similar situation which the other woman is definitely it is okay for you to feel a lot anxious and overwhelmed because i understand for the fact that most of you all are getting admitted to a hospital for the very first time during your pregnancy so it's a whole new strange environment with the whole thing which is coming up but what you can make yourself uh, do to make yourself feel better is to get prepared for this Uh, that woman is shouting and screaming and because she is not in control of herself she really does not know what exactly needs to be done and also to get the right see the, it's very important for you to start working on a birth plan and discussing these things with your doctor because i have worked in a hospital i work as a doula with many of my clients you will, and when you guys will go into labor you will be actually coming back and telling me it was just me and my husband who was there in the labor room no one else came like there would be like you know doctors who came in intermittently and checked me like twice or thrice all, all during the labor or nurses who came and just kept telling me yeah pain aa raha that was very good but no one actually told me what exactly had to be done and you know how i could actually deal with it and my, me and my husband were clueless what had to be done so you know you can navigate the situation better when you get educated and start discussing with your doctor right from now what are the things that you want in your birth plan and you know what are the things that uh, you know you would like inside the labor room would you want your part now would you want to do la inside all these things can be safely discussed from now on so that that doesn't look like a unfamiliar event during the day when you have to actually face it so preparation right from starting uh, from the time like your 18 week onwards you can start attending classes and getting yourself prepared got it yeah hope that helps me too uh, next question is from dilli which is what are the effective ways to tackle nausea uh, especially to ensure that nutrition is not compromised 
ओके नोसिया सी योर हॉर्मोन्स टेक अबाउट एटीन वीक्स ऑफ टाइम तो इट्स यूजली अराउंड ट्वेल्व टू सिक्सटीन बट सम वुमेन एक्चुअली टेक अ लिटिल लॉन्गर बट अराउंड एटीन वीक्स इज द टाइम दैट यू विल एक्चुअली रियलाइज दैट योर बॉडी हैज काइंड ऑफ सेटल इन बट विल दैट एटीन वीक्स इट्स अगेन अ वेरी बंपी पीरियड वे यू हैव दीज मॉर्निंग सिक्नेस अबाउट्स ऑफ यू नो नोसिएटेड फीलिंग वॉट यू कुड डू इज प्रोबेबली यू नो हैव मील्स इन स्मॉल फ्रीक्वेंट इंटरवल्स अगेन दैट्स गोइंग टू रियल Really help not give a lot of load on your digestive system in uh, you know digesting these things. So it it has it has its gap in digesting these things in frequent gaps. Also make sure that before you go to bed you have your food at least one or two hours prior. Okay, you have it. Do, uh, do not have anything very immediately, and uh, you know just go off to sleep again. That morning when you're going to get up, you're going to have the reflux and then again the nausea. So uh, and first thing that you get up in the morning, make sure that you're having like a glass of water and a dry biscuit. You can have like a dry biscuit or a cracker or anything which is basically dry. So again, what this does is when you have something dry on empty stomach, it absorbs down all these fluids in your stomach, and again the nausea feeling gets a little relieved. So you can do that, and uh, again uh, sipping from a sipper bottle. So that is very very important rather than just directly gulping water. Got it. Uh, Mika, by the way, is it fine if I can share your number in your Insta? Like I'll share your Insta channel right now. But can I share your yeah. personal number? Is that yes, fine? yes. Yes. I yeah. think I've connected with a lot of them. There are familiar names. I think here and there, whenever I see the doubts, I do DM mm-hmm. them and then kind of pacify them. So mm-hmm. yes. Uh, so Works. yes, you are free to connect with me. Works. I have shared her details, so you can just stay, uh, save all of uh, the her number and her Insta channel. And meanwhile, we have a few questions left. We can go about yes. that, right? uh yeah so dilip hopefully that answers your question next we have from uh, shreya are there any specific exercises to do during labor yes during labor uh, what you could do is safely you can do your squats even in labor check with the hospital if they have like a squat bar or some kind of railings near the labor room ldr room which you can use to go down and you know do your uh, uh, squats duck walk again inside the labor room is something that you can keep doing uh, birth ball please check with your facility if they have a birth ball because if for nothing just sit and spend time on the birth ball so inside the labor room also you can use Use the birth ball, and you will fe- uh, feel, and you will actually come back and report that birth ball is the only thing which helped you because it takes away the sensation of pain when you're giving counter pressure. Okay, so sitting on the birth ball and relaxing and bouncing down, uh, doing hip circles, hip sways, uh, really going to help you. So these are some of the exercises that you can do. Uh, if you can actually just you know uh, bend down on the uh, bed and on on your knees, and then. Uh, kind of hold the bed and kind of again uh, do some kind of swaying movements also really helps basically anything which uh, exercises or movements where you are in upright position and uh, basic kind of uh, you know spreading your legs where again it increases the pelvic uh, outlet noted next uh yeah next question is from hima which is uh, can we drink cranberry juice in complete pregnancy cranberry juice yes you can drink cranberry juice there is nothing wrong with it in fact cranberry juice is really really good because again it uh, during pregnancy is again the time that you are more prone to utis okay urinary tract infection so cranberry juice is really really effective for that uh, so even you know kind of doctors kind of giving uh, give you these natural cranberry supplements also when you actually get uh, uti so cranberry juice can be safely consumed there is no harm in having it no Uh, next question is from Neharika, which is uh, she has been very active during her pregnancy, but now at thirty-eight weeks, she feels very low on energy. So any yeah, uh, th- that is this is from Neharika, right? Yeah, Neharika was it? Yeah. Yeah. So Neharika, this is very normal to happen. Uh, there is nothing wrong with you. Your you are actually your body is kind of getting prepared. Uh, so you you will realize that if you are actually going into labor anytime soon, uh, first. first of all just be patient with your body let your body give you signs and symptoms for the labor to actually begin but uh, you know you will realize that uh, just weeks or days before that you're going into labor you will start having high spurts of energy uh, so i am not saying at this point uh, go and over exert yourself but uh, as minimum as if a 30 minutes walk can be cut down to 15 minutes but doing that walk every day 
will really help you because you really do not want to uh, just stay back on the bed and really don't do any exercises which in turn can really uh, make you tired and exhausted during labor so keep doing some kind of activity uh, but this is bound to happen because there is a lot of uh, this uh, hormone called relaxin which is released into your body right now which is in turn preparing your body to flex and relax uh, uh, during labor so because of which this is happening but uh, it's okay it's fine <laughs> okay. uh yeah uh, most of the questions are done we can revisit the two questions which were around food items right which were asked earlier so the first one was from jinnal which is can we consume products with msg ajinomoto no you cannot you really cannot <laughs> okay so i uh, see we know that uh, something msg ajinomoto is uh, harmful for us as when we are in a pre pregnant state so uh, definitely it's we know that uh, you know a lot of it is filtered and then you know the placenta gives only the good stuff to the baby but still uh, we really don't want to take any risk so we generally say that you know i know the craving for chinese and unhealthy food is quite too much during pregnancy but having once in a while like once in a month is still fine but uh, if you can restrict or can have uh, you know alternatives like you know where which is made at home definitely that will be better but msg ajinomoto needs to be really really avoided it is not a good uh, element to be actually there in your body got it uh, and next question is from bhavita which is can we have barley from 30 weeks of pregnancy Yes, you can have barley. There is no harm in having barley. See, all these myths around the food is uh, somewhere you need, really need to. Uh, as far as I have been in this field and have been interacting, I really haven't found any really strong evidence around food which should not be have except for these uh, very harmful elements that you know natural additives or preservatives that which are used or processed food. But all your natural things, you there is nothing that you really cannot have. I mean, even for the fact that uh, papaya, pineapple. all these things should not be have you can have them you really can have them and they are not going to induce your labor a lot and in fact barley is also really good because again uti it really helps barley water really helps again in kind of uh, preventing uti so please consume it if you really feel like having it got it uh yeah i guess that's mostly it uh, thank you so much meka for taking our time this has been you know <laughs> uh, the longest yeah. session we have had and it has it has been yeah. informative along the way right like uh, yeah. so thank you so much for taking our time uh, yeah. meanwhile guys i have shared her details uh, right on the chat you can reach out to her and you know for one on one consultation you can discuss with her on our instagram or on her phone number right to share across uh yeah thank you thank you so much meka thank Mika. you so much and thank you so much for being patient and just sticking along and asking such interesting questions uh and i wish you all the very best in your journeys ahead and if there's anything always drop in a message and i'll be happy to get back to you uh so it was nice interacting with such a lovely curious bunch of pregnant yeah. ladies thank you thank you so much meka thank you everyone i'll share the recording on the youtube channel so you can refer to it right in case you want to go through the study thank you everyone bye guys take care bye, -bye. thank you